And now to start the assembly, the overhaul of this auto locking hub, you'll see the bearing here for this part here. I already removed the cover at both sides, so I was able to clean the internal parts of this bearing, removed all the dirt, the old grease, and since the internal parts are already exposed, you can clean it very well and apply new grease to it. So you won't need to buy new bearings, you can reuse it. And now apply the grease here at the bearing, the inside of the bearing. And now to install this bearing back here, there you go. And to install the circlip clip back to hold the bearing in place. There you go. And now this assembly is finished. I will assemble in sections and to assemble this part here, these four parts here as one, you'll see the spring here. As you will see there's a taller spring and a shorter spring. The shorter spring is within this pack here and this spring here you need to coat it with grease in order to prevent corrosion just a coat of grease and start with this end here then go around just a thin coat of grease you don't need it to be too thick there you go also you need to grease this part here it's where the spring sits just a thin coat of grease then install this back here there's no orientation next is this gear here you apply grease here where the spring here sits just the thin coat only also here just the thin coat only of grease also at the gears here the inner gears there you go and to install this here and again just what I told you a while ago this part here it should be at um, the maximum reach in engaging at this part here in disengage mode this part here is at the center part its position at the center part if it is engaged mode it will go down here lock in place if you install this incorrectly in the opposite direction the gear will not fully reach the splines the inner gear of this part will not reach the gear here so your four-wheel drive locking hub will not engage it will not lock so always remember maximum reach because this part here has no gear at this side only at this side so remember maximum reach install it in this direction with the gear outside there you go next is this plastic thing here coat this thing here with thin coat of grease there you go and now to install this remember this three plastic part here should lock in this group so position one part first and on the other side just push it down there you go check for alignment the metal part and the plastic part should be fully aligned just rotate a little there you go so I'll apply grease here and this thing here also apply grease here at this portion
and always remember that this part here should go outwards also this part here this two should go outwards also so when you install it just insert it like that there you go this part here goes outwards this part here go outwards and it rotates like that and to install the spring here also coat it with the grease and install it back into position There you go. Always position this V groove here at the center of these two areas here. This thing rotates, just hold this two here when you position it. There you go. And then install this plastic part here. Just remember that there's a gap here and also a gap here just align it just like that there you go as you'll see there's a slot for its proper position you can also apply a thin coat of grease here there you go That's our final reassembly there you go And to install the circlip to hold this bearing in place there you go as you'll see you can also test the bearing as you'll see the bearing is still good just needs new grease and to install the spring here you also need to grease the spring thin coat only to prevent corrosion. In case uh, there's water contamination, it will not easily corrode. So the PS portage seals of the axle is prone to failure. More so in the earlier versions of the PS portage. The seals is not that efficient in sealing against water, mud, contaminants when you offload your car. There you go. Now install it. There's no orientation. This spring pushes the gear outwards in disengage mode. And to install this, this wider part here because of the plastic should be slotted on the widest section also so you need to align it you need to align the gear first there you go you can push this plastic down if it's in the proper slot and now to install this retaining ring here as much as possible we position the end of this retaining ring to the area where I ported. Let's check it out again. Let's mark the position. So that's the part where we ported the area so that we can easily pry this retaining ring. I will mark it here because you can't see it anymore once you inserted this already. Again, align it proper slot if you can't push it down this plastic part it can push this plastic part it's not yet cozy that there there you go it's in its proper groove already so when installing this find your 
Mart area, there it is. And position the end near that. Now to fully push the retaining ring to its groove. There you go. Next thing is this here. Again, you apply grease on this part here. Because, uh, it creates friction to the plastic part. Also, the plastic part, you need to crease that. And to install it. And this retaining ring, just coat it with grease so that it will not easily corrode when contaminated. And install it. There you go. Also grease this area. There you go. Also, don't forget to grease this, the V group. Also, this area here where this greased part slides to. There you go. Again, this is this pointed part here sits here. And now to install the lock hub together with its complete mechanism. You see the this two part here. You need to insert that. There's a groove there. You need to insert it in this groove. So you just need to align that. need to fully seat that to the bearing hub and when you install this you make sure these three raised areas here is slotted in the v-groove there then you just need to spin it to align to the proper hole for the 10 millimeter bolts actually they are 12 millimeter bolts but with the 10 millimeter head then you tighten it in a criss-cross pattern these are Ford E150 wheels just machine bore to fit the Kia Sportage